Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's video we are going to be looking at a brand new add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator and that is FS Hood. It is a new air traffic control add-on which makes air traffic control in Microsoft Flight Simulator much, much more immersive and much more realistic than the default ATC. The list of features included with FS HUD is really rather impressive and we'll discuss more of those as we go along in this video. In this video I plan to showcase the product as we do a short flight and we will use of course FS HUD for all of our ATC throughout the flight. Installation of the add-on is pretty straightforward once you've got around registering it. In order to register it, you get links sent to you, you need to confirm your password, then you need to confirm a new password. However, I spent ages trying to do this. However, what I didn't realize is that when you are creating a new password, it does have to have an uppercase, a lowercase, a number, and special character. Seems like a very obvious thing to say, but the program itself didn't tell you it needed these, so it would not let me move forward to the next menu to register the product. Once I got my head around that installation was nice and easy. Obviously go ahead, accept the uh, license agreement, hit continue and then you're presented with the actual installation. Now obviously this doesn't take too long and you need to be connected to the internet in order to do this and one of the other things as well at this point is a good time to say is that whenever you are using this product you have to be connected to the internet. There is no offline availability for FS HUD at the moment. What is quite neat is whilst waiting for the product to install, you can actually go through and read through the manuals. They're already there and broken down into the nine categories you can see here on the screen. So give you something to do while that product downloads. After the product has finished downloading, the first time you launch it, it will go ahead and download the latest AirAc cycle if you have a Navigraph subscription. If not, then it will use the default AirAc cycle that is currently installed in your Microsoft Flight Simulator. When that's all downloaded, it'll just sit there waiting for the simulator. So let's go ahead and launch Microsoft Flight Sim. The first time you launch FS HUD with Microsoft Flight Simulator, it will have to index the scenery files. Now this is quite a long process, so it can take a little while. Thankfully, it is, however, just a one-off. That said, this process does occur every time the AIRAC cycle is updated or if some of the scenery within Microsoft Flight Simulator is changed. Once that's all done then, FS HUD is connected to this flight sim and it just wants you to follow the on-screen instructions. We basically need to start a free flight from the world map, selecting a departure airport gate and then pressing fly. We don't press the continue button in FS HUD until after this scene has next loaded and we click the ready to fly button. Now we can press continue and we just need to give it 30 seconds or so to calibrate all of the relevant information that it needs. We're presented with a couple of options. Number one is select a flight where you can select a flight that you have done previously or you can set up a brand new one or second, you can start a Simbrief flight. I created a quick flight from Liverpool to Edinburgh on Simbrief. So I selected a Simbrief flight, entered the Simbrief username and then we went to import it. This then quickly downloads your flight information and presents everything to you. All that's left to do is go ahead and press continue. This will then bring up the actual flight routing that air traffic control in the app is going to use and it will also show you any errors. You can either then attempt to try and fix those themselves or you can let the program try and fix them for you. There is great documentation within this product to help you understand how this is all done. However, try as I might here, I couldn't seem to get this particular flight plan to be accepted and work properly. And I went through a lot of different things and documentation to try and get this to work correctly. And then suddenly I saw something which explained everything. Well, unfortunately at the moment, FS Hood will not allow you to fly to add-on airports. More details are given on the website's FAQ page, but basically FS HUD isn't able to map the scenery files that are currently encrypted, say if you've purchased them from the marketplace, for example. So it means that as I had currently got Perugis Edinburgh Airport installed here in my simulator, the FS HUD air traffic control system could not find that airport or didn't recognize it and couldn't link to it. So I decided instead, let's fly to a default airport 
But Liverpool is, of course, default, handcrafted by Zobo in the UK World Update. I thought a nice short flight down to East Midlands, which I know I have got no add-on scenery for installed at the moment. So, a quick rerouting and a new Simbrief flight plan later. I was ready to go ahead and see if we could get this one to work and be recognised in FS Hood. Hit continue and there we go. It presents us with the profile it will uh, expect us to fly and we can pretty much just go through and start the flight. There's more documentation again around all of this included with the installation. As soon as we confirm we are ready to go, it obviously tells us to stand by, recognises where we are parked, and then we're just ready to request our flight clearance. Now, apologies if this ATC sounds a little bit quiet to begin with. My settings weren't correct at the time, but I tried to turn those up best we can. So, apologies, but let's have a listen to the ATC. So, pretty good. We've got all the information we need. We got our squawk code, we got our initial climb clearance, we also got obviously our departure. All we need to do now is get ready and let them know that we're ready for pushback. Now, as you can hear, they're obviously calling us by our actual registration code rather than, say, EZ34 Alpha Mike, which was my call sign for this flight in Simbrief. There will be a setting somewhere to change that, so it does call you by the correct call sign, as I know that the correct call signs are included with FS HUD, but at the time of filming this, I hadn't yet managed to work out where that is. If you do know where that is, then please do let us know down in the comments and uh, leave a message for, uh, for other people and myself so we know exactly how to go ahead and set that up correctly. So we have just pushed back. It didn't tell us whether to push back facing north, south, etc. So I um, went for the push and clearly we've been confronted with some live traffic. So at this moment, I was a little bit annoyed that clearly he's telling me to taxi. I've got an aircraft in front of me. I couldn't hear them communicating with that aircraft. And then suddenly I thought, hang on a minute. I need to just check something. So in the simulator, I had actually got live traffic turned on. And a quick check of the Microsoft Flight Simulator settings included in the documentation for FS HUD Air Traffic Control tells me that actually I need to make sure that live traffic or any traffic of any kind is turned off. The reason for this is because FS Hood Air Traffic Control automatically generates realistic traffic around you and your airport, but because it is generating the traffic, it also controls the traffic to keep you clear of conflicts. If you've got AIG manager traffic injecting traffic into the sim, or you've got live traffic on, as I did here, one, it doesn't communicate with it, and two, you end up facing an aircraft head on on the taxiway. So, lesson learned live traffic turn off. Golf Echo to New Golf Sierra. Contact Liverpool Tower 126.35. Contact Liverpool Tower 126.35. Golf Echo to New Golf Sierra. Liverpool Tower Golf Echo to New Golf Sierra. Runway 09. Ready for departure. Golf Echo to New Golf Sierra. Line up. Runway 09er. Line up. Runway 09er. Golf Echo to New Golf Sierra. 
So let's go ahead and take off. And as you can see, whilst I was messing with FS Hood air traffic control, I completely forgot to turn off the APU. But all of the rest of things looks good. I'm going to turn on TCAS because I'll be interested to see if the uh, FS Hood air traffic controller is indeed injecting traffic into the simulator and if it will be displayed on the TCAS system. It should be known as well for the purposes of this video, I'm flying the experimental version of the fly-by-wire aircraft. ATC, as you can hear, is currently set up to be handled by my first officer. You could also see on the navigation display as well, there was indeed TCAS showing uh, live traffic being ejected. Now all I was waiting for was to hear some of the ATC actually communicating with some of this live traffic. As we continued our departure from Liverpool, I did indeed hear air traffic control talking to other aircraft around us, including an EasyJet and Ryanair, all using the correct call signs as well, being told to contact various different centres and approaches, all very nice and very realistic. Obviously, this was just a very short test flight, so we were only climbing up to 9,000 feet. One of the things that I did notice about the ATC was that it told you to climb to a flight level correctly, but then also gave you the local Q&H. Obviously, that's not how it's done. You use standard pressure when climbing to a flight level. The left-hand side of the FS HUD window basically lets you know what the air traffic control will be expecting you to do and kind of how the air traffic control is routing you so you know what to expect, which is kind of nice, but it's also nice knowing that that is essentially what the virtual air traffic controller is going to try and get you to do. So you can obviously see the direction that we're flying, the little arrow down at the bottom, the various intersections and airways, etc. Also gives you an estimated time as well. Now we've been given the approach to expect, we can actually go in and select which arrival we would actually like using the override arrival instructions tab. So this is all set up for ILS vectors for runway 27. It even gives us our parking stand as well in advance, which is very useful. So we'd been cleared for the ILS approach, which basically means now we could just sort of vector ourselves in. We could also go ahead and fly the full ILS approach procedure, which is essentially the approach that was given over the airport, making a teardrop shape. But for quickness, I literally decided just to fly a little traffic pattern here, go downwind, and then get ourselves lined up and contact ATC again once we were on the localizer, as that's what we've been cleared for. Now, obviously, at the time of release, there are a limited number of voices, but Evers Hood have planned to increase the amount of voices that come shipped with the program as the development of the product continues. Golf Sierra, one final two seven. 
And now, as I hadn't looked at the parking chart for East Midlands Airport, I literally decided to see if I could just follow the little arrow that uh, is shown here on the display for FS Hood uh, to see just how well this actually directed us, doing it slowly, of course, to make sure that I don't miss any turns. And sure enough, as you can see, I did indeed make it without using the chart. Obviously, if you're flying on VATSIM or something like that, or even flying with FS Hood, it's always great to have the chart if you have those available. But it's nice to see just how accurate this is, and you can even see the little ground markings as well, also showing that parking stand 114. The app also lets you have a quick look at the uh, flight timetable as well. This is the traffic that it is currently injecting and both controlling at the same time in the simulator. It's nice to see realistic flight routings there as well. So overall then, I actually was quite impressed with this product. It is a marked step up from the default air traffic control in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Whilst many people like and prefer to fly on virtual networks like the VATSIM network, like I do on the live streams we see here on the channel, for those of you for which VATSIM may not be an option, or for those of you who really don't want to fly online with live ATC for whatever reason, and would prefer much more realistic ATC in the comfort of your own simulator, I think FS Hood is a really good option. For more information on FS Hood air traffic control and of course to purchase the product, check out a link in the video description down below that will take you to their website. You can read through all of the different specifications and features of the program. There's also an FAQ page on there as well for any questions you may have. If you already have a copy of FS Hood air traffic control, really interested to know what you think about this and how realistic you find the program so please do leave a comment down below thank you so much for watching if you have found this video useful please don't forget to hit that like button it makes a huge difference to the channel so thank you to everybody that does that and of course if you are not a subscriber to the channel hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on that notifications bell so you don't miss any future content or live streams thanks so much and i shall see you all in the next one bye bye for now